In this video, we'll cover testing differences between means, specifically testing differences between means for independent samples. When we do hypothesis testing in statistics, we have a research hypothesis, that is, what we as sociologists expect to see, as well as a null hypothesis, which is what we actually test. The research hypothesis is that the mean for two different groups on some dependent variable are not equal or differ. The null hypothesis is the opposite of this claim. That is, the population mean for two groups are equal or there is no difference. In the last video, we covered confidence intervals. The formula for confidence intervals is based on this formula for t. As you can see, in order to solve for the population mean, or mu, we need a t value, which we obtain from a table, a sample mean, and an estimate of the standard error. Testing for differences between the means of two groups uses essentially the same formula, but we replace the means with differences between means. So instead of one sample mean, we look at the difference between two sample means. And instead of subtracting the population mean, we subtract the difference between the population means. Finally, the denominator, instead of a standard error for a sample mean, is a standard error for differences between sample means. Based on the null hypothesis, we can simplify this formula. According to the null hypothesis, which is what we are testing, there is no difference between the means of the two groups. In other words, this term equals zero. If the population mean for both groups is five, five minus five is zero. If the population means were 10, 10 minus 10 is zero. So this term is equal to zero. And if we subtract zero from any number, we simply get that number. So we can delete that second term entirely. Which leaves us with this formula, which is the formula presented in the textbook. T equals the difference in the sample means divided by the standard error of the difference in sample means. The most difficult part of solving this equation is calculating the standard error. The formula for the standard error is quite large. However, just as with the standard error for the mean, which we calculated for confidence intervals, this standard error requires that we know the variance and the sample size of our samples. In other words, it has very few unique variables. In order to illustrate t-tests for differences between means, I will work through problem 24 in your textbook. This problem states, an educator was interested in cooperative versus competitive classroom activities as they might influence the ability of students to make friends among their classmates. On a random basis, he divided his 20 students into two different styles of teaching a cooperative approach in which students relied on one another in order to get a grade, and a competitive approach in which students worked individually to outperform their classmates. Use the following data indicating the number of classmates chosen by students as their friends to test the null hypothesis that cooperation has no effect on students' friendship choices. What do your results indicate? Each of these numbers represents the data for one student, and reflects the number of friends that student has in the classroom. The research hypothesis is that the style of teaching, cooperative versus competitive, affects the number of friends the students have. In other words, there is a difference in the average number of friends claimed by those in the competitive setting versus the cooperative setting. The null hypothesis is that students in each group have the same average number of friends. The first step to solving the problem is to calculate means and variance for each of our samples. So for the group in the competitive approach, the mean is equal to the average 
of the 10 students. You can use the same average function to find the average for the cooperation sample. According to the data, those in the competitive setting had an average of four friends in the classroom, while those in the cooperative setting had an average of seven friends. Next, we'll calculate the variance. In order to calculate variance, we'll first square each of the scores. So for the first data point, three friends in the competitive sample, that is equal to three squared. I can then click on the lower right hand corner and copy this formula into the rest of the cells. I'll do the same thing with the students in the cooperative sample. And then I'll sum those squared scores by using Excel's sum function. The formula for variance is equal to the sum of the squared scores divided by n, in this case 10 for the competitive sample, minus the mean of that sample squared. I can do the same for our second sample, the cooperative sample. The variance is equal to the sum of the squared scores divided by n, again 10 students in the cooperative sample, minus the mean for that sample squared. As we can see, the variance for both samples is equal to five friends squared. Now that I have each sample mean, the variance for each sample, and the sample sizes, I have all the information I need to calculate the standard error as well as the t-score. I'll start with the standard error and I'll copy the formula into the spreadsheet so that I don't have to go back and forth between the two pages. Since this is a rather large formula, I'm going to calculate it in steps. The first thing I'm going to do is calculate this denominator. The reason for that is that it happens to be equivalent to the degrees of freedom, which I'll need once I calculate a t-score. So the degrees of freedom equals n1, or the sample size for the first sample, plus n2, or the sample size for the second sample, minus 2. In this case, there are 20 students, so 20 minus 2 is 18. And again, that is equal to the denominator of this first term. Next, I'm going to calculate this whole first term. So it's equal to, in parentheses, the sample size of the first sample times the variance of the first sample plus the sample size of the second sample times the variance of the second sample. And all of that is divided by n1 plus n2 minus 2, or the degrees of freedom. So 5.56 is the value of this first term. The second term is equal to, in parentheses, the sum of the two sample sizes, n1 plus n2, 
close parentheses, divided by, and again I'll put this in parentheses, the product of the two sample sizes, in this case 10 times 10, and close the parentheses. This value, 0.2, is equal to the second term. So our standard error is equal to the square root of the product of these two terms. SQRT, which is Excel's square root function, and then in parentheses, the first term times our second term, and then close the parentheses. So our standard error of the differences between the means is equal to 1.05. Next, we can calculate a t-score. The t-score is equal to the difference in the means divided by the standard error. Equals, in parentheses, the mean of the first sample minus the mean of the second sample, close parentheses, divided by our standard error, or negative 2.846. This is our observed t, or calculated t. It's the t-score for our data. In order to test our null hypothesis, we will compare this observed t to a t-value from the table in the back of the book. Again, our degree of freedom is equal to 18. So if we look to table B, for 18 degrees of freedom, we can see various values for t based on different levels of alpha. Generally, in social research, we use 0.05 as our level of confidence, so our t value is 2.101. When we compare our calculated t to the t-score from the table, we can ignore the sign of our calculated t. And what we are looking at is whether or not our calculated t is larger than the t-score from the table. In this case, 2.846 is greater than 2.101. So if this t here represents the t-score from the table, our observed t is a little beyond it in this shaded area. What that tells us is that it would be very unlikely for us to see a difference in means of that size if both of our samples came from the same population, or if both population means were the same. When our observed t is larger than the table value, we reject the null hypothesis. The null hypothesis is there are no differences between the groups in mean number of friends. We reject that idea, which provides some support for our research hypothesis that there is a difference. When our calculated t is less than the t from the table, called a critical t, then we retain the null hypothesis, which means that it's possible that the population means are the same for both groups. But again, in this case, our calculated t is greater than our critical t, and so we have some evidence that there is a difference in the means of the two groups.